Welcome back to the boathouse, where Steve has a bit over seven months left to get Arabella ready to put into the water for the first time. Over the winter months, the deck will get as many coats of linseed oil as it can absorb. The pitch is too sticky to clean up at the moment, but the cold weather will help it to harden and respond better to the scraper. And if you didn't know it already, these videos are made possible by the supporters on Patreon. Find out more in the description below on how you can contribute. You can also go to our store at acorntoarabella.com to knock out some holiday gifts or get something for yourself, or simply kick back and enjoy the video. We're just glad that you're here. Last week, Steve got the rudder glued and bolted together, and this week he'll put some shape into it, and following Atkins' design, we'll add a bit of lead to it as well. Our uh, paint as an adhesive seems to have worked, and you can see here the paint's still pretty soft where it's thick. But I unclamped it, and nothing seems to have moved. So that's awesome. Even if it does, we can shove it back on there. It's just going to be nice to have it stuck in place while we do the fairing. This morning, I cut this strip of cardboard, so I made it the width of the rudder, and then put in where it needs to taper, so where we need it to be about five eighths, three quarters, somewhere in there. And then we want to taper down to full thickness at the bottom and full thickness at the top. I have that all lined up down the center here. Now I can trace that out, um, pull a few more measurements, make a few more marks and, and get to shaping this thing. Can I pick your brain a little bit? Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> sure. So I marked the, the taper on the edge for where the shape's going to be. Oh, yeah. But I think before I start to put in the taper, I should cut the mortises, even if they're not totally finished, for the rudder hardware. Because I think it's going to be trickier to do once it's tapered. That makes sense. How far does the taper go? Uh, it comes within a few inches of the leading edge. But I think mortising before tapering makes sense. And then once the taper, you can cut more precisely to fit. So we got to let this part here in. I have to cut a little notch out of the rudder here because we want this pivot point as close to it as we can get it. But I want to be able to remove the pins without having a big notch cut out of the rudder for the pin. Yeah.
While Steve was working on the rudder, Joe was taking the bronze hardware through the machine shop in the garage. Victoria used these pieces as they were cast. For their second life on Arabella, the pins will be perfectly centered and round, and the mating surfaces machined flat. I'm happy with how the, the rudder hardware fits here. So those are, are led into their homes. And the next challenge ahead of us is to put the shape in the rudder. So down here at the very foot, we're gonna leave that full thickness for now. And we're gonna transition from about here to here and just get narrower and narrower. This is our thinnest section out the farthest outboard edge of the rudder. Another transition and then full at the top. So we've got a long section here that we need to remove almost nothing at this end of the rudder and taper that down to this line. Uh, and how we're gonna do that is using the adds and a jig with the circular saw. So this is my handy dandy jig. Uh, it's just a piece of pine and it is thinner at this end than it is at this end. And it is thinner by this amount here that we wanna remove. So by putting this across our rudder and running the circular saw down it, as we come down this, the circular saw cut will get deeper and deeper and deeper. And we're gonna kerf the daylights out of this and then chase that with the ads.
last one. We'll try. George was making up the bolts that will fasten the house top while the rest of the crew finished fairing work on the house and the cockpit. We'll cover this in more detail in next week's episode. Gosh. So that happens when you hit some bronze. So there was the blade. Yeah. But. <laughs> oh, yeah, there, 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 there. it goes. And there. there it goes. So we had to grind these down a little bit. Yep. You want me to go straight in? Sure. Yep. And then just go right past the saw horses. Keep going, keep going. This little Ross can swing in. Okay. Start to lay it down. There you go, and towards Ross. So you can come again. There we go. It's out of the way, huh? Oh, 16. Still need more lead. Atkin has 25 pounds of lead outed to the lower outer edge of the rudder here. He doesn't specify why. It's not something that I've come across really before. Um, but it kind of makes sense. So it's a wooden rudder. Um, even with the bronze hardware in here, it would float. So I think having that weight there you know, helps keep it from wanting to float away. Um, but more than that, I think having the weight down, and maybe someone who knows better can correct me um, or confirm, 
but I believe that that weight is to kind of help just dampen the feel on the rudder maybe a little bit. And also if you're sitting in harbor and there's some chop or some waves, I think having that 25 pounds hanging down off the back of the rudder will help keep that tiller from batting around in the cockpit. That's my guess. Anyways, Atkins says we should have it, so we're gonna put it in. He has it as just a strip that seems to be fastened to the edge of the rudder. But this rudder is pretty thin out here and I don't love that. So what I did is took some scrap bronze left over from doing the deck strapping, bent a rod that's roughly the curvature of the rudder here and welded it in. And the welds are super ugly, I know. They don't really, there's none of this is structural. Um, I have the metal here on top of the rod where I want it to be wider and I have it on the side of the rod here where we want it to be narrower. And that accounts for the taper that we have in the rudder as it goes from that thin edge and fattens out. And when I welded it, I measured the thickness here, which was one and a half. So I put a one and a half inch block between them. And we're gonna bury this in the ground over here. And then we're gonna fill this cavity with lead until we get to, I don't know, about here somewhere, or have used the 25 pounds, whichever one comes first. barely made it to that side. With just a little bit of clay right there. Yeah, well, that's fine. Yeah. Perfect. Sweet. We'll dig it up tomorrow. This is cooled overnight. Let's see uh, if we can get her out of here. We can fit the wood right in there. Clean that up a little bit. Same thing on this end. Oh, those wedges did great. Beautiful. Before I welded this up, I put it on here. traced it out with where it's gonna sit. And now what we need to do is figure out what we're removing for the lead. And I did that with this little pattern. I just filled in the blank spaces with cardboard. Line that up at the top edge. Traced it out and now we can cut it out. Now this whole rudder here is at an angle. So I'm gonna put a circular saw on here and hand saw, jigsaw, I don't know. We'll see what I use. Probably a circular saw and a hand saw. I'm gonna cut these and it's gonna cut at an angle because this is at an angle. 
So what I'm going to do is cut a little bit wide of that line, clean that up, um, trying to keep it square sort of to the to these tapered faces. But what will really determine that is when we go and fit it to the lead. Uh, and as we put it in and see where we're hitting in shape, we'll get that defined. Right now, I just need to get enough meat off here that we can slide this on and actually realistically start to fit it. Beautiful. Now, that did not fit first try like that after routing. I routed and slid it in, tapped it, could kind of see spots where it was rubbing, ground those down a little bit, tapped it in a little farther, traced the edge out a little bit, tapped it a little farther. But thanks to not running the camera and movie magic, <laughs> it seems like it just slid right in there. So you can see here's the end of our breadboard tenon. And this is a spot where, like I said, these timbers are gonna wanna swell. And this is eventually gonna end up becoming a little bit short, more than likely as all this timber moves. And what we don't want is for worms or creepy crawlies to be able to get into any of the gaps around here. So we painted it quite heavily and stuck it on there uh, and that anti-fallon paint should stop it. But you know, you can see these are pretty thin pieces here. And I'd like to cover that up. And that's what this little piece on here is for. That'll go there. We'll put some bedding compound behind it, three screws or so. And when we finish fairing down the rudder, we'll be able to run right through the bronze with the belt sander no problem, easy peasy, and we'll get that all shaped down with the rest of this. You can see that we're still still proud here, and we'll get all of that fared down once this is in place. So I'm real happy with this. Um, the lead is a little wonky in there, uh, so the fit is not excruciatingly, unbelievably tight. So what we're going to do is throw some 4200 in here, and essentially permanently glue this in place. There's no reason for it to come off. Uh, the 4200 is fairly flexible and we'll give some play to it. We're gonna use a bunch of these uh, number eight one inch slotted screws. Just kind of pepper it with a few and get this attached on there. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed the video. Do us a big favor and hit that like button if you did. Also make sure you're subscribed and come back next week to see how Steve finishes off the rudder for now. And if you're wondering what all the sanding and hammering was going on in the background, you can find out next Friday. And again, no progress would be made on this project without the support of our loyal viewers. Check the link to our Patreon page and help out if you can. Check out the website at acorntoarabella.com and sign up for the weekly newsletter to hear first about special offers and what's coming up next in the shop.